Are you one of those players who feel like the further I swing the club back, the more power I'm going to produce? Maybe you get disappointed when the club does actually go back a bit further. Let's have a look at why that is. Hi, I'm Peter Knight, and I've created this channel, Peter Knight Golf, to help you play the best golf you possibly can. Today we're going to look at the backswing movement. We'll look at how both arms work in the swing and a little bit about the wrist movement and why having excessive movement doesn't actually allow you to create more, more leverage in the swing, more power in the swing and hit the ball further. So if we have a look at, say, correct arm movement during the swing, and I'm going to sort of isolate the movement, mostly looking at what the right arm does. So when I set myself up, my right arm is a little bit, or right hand's a little bit forward of the centre line of my body, and it's in this position down here. Now you can see that I've got a little bit of a bend in my right elbow at this point. When I swing the club to the end of my backswing, my right elbow is going to bend from about here to maybe a maximum of about a 90 degree fold. So really you can see that my elbow's only really moved through that range there. So from side on you can see the fold in my elbow. When you look at that motion from front on, you'll see that my right hand has moved from being a little forward of the centre line of my body to being a little uh, behind the centre line of my body. So that's all the motion that I'm creating in the backswing. As far as my upper arm goes in relation to my, say, my chest and my shoulders, almost no motion, no movement at all. There might be the tiniest little bit, bit of movement, but not a lot. So many players I see in an attempt to swing the club back further, they either fold the right elbow so it's really closed right up, or they allow the right arm to move out to the side, or both often. So that when the club gets to the end of the backswing, as you can see at the end of the backswing here, my right elbow is really folded up. My right arm is almost in line with my chest here. And now I've got very little control of the movement of the club from this point. So if I practice that motion, just right arm in front, let it fold to about 90 degrees. And then from here, I'm not gonna worry about my golf club for the moment. I'm gonna keep my right arm's relationship with my upper body the same. And then from here, just rotate. So when I get back to here, you can see that my right elbow is still only bent about 90 degrees and my arm has not moved around here. So from here, from this view here, you can easily see my right elbow. Now, if I do that with a golf club, it should look the same. So as I rotate back to the end of the backswing, you can still see my right arm because it hasn't pulled back behind me. Getting that right arm movement correct is really, really important. Now, the other thing, as far as that arm movement goes, if my right arm moves correctly, then my left arm won't be pulled across my chest as I go back. So my hands, because they're now at the end of the backswing, only just slightly right of the center line of my body, there's no sort of squashing my left arm against the chest. So there's no stress through my shoulder where my arm is pulled across. So for those players who are say finely built, so you know, thinner arms, thinner through the chest. So most, a lot of young players, when you swing the club back, you can swing the club right back here because you're capable of doing it. You've got that range of motion through your body, but you don't want to do it. It's not going to help to develop control. You'll lose control doing that. So when you swing correctly, again, for those um, like, say, smaller players or, or more finely built players, skinnier players, it's a lot easier to get back to here and, and do things excessively. For the, for the bigger players, you know, bigger arms, bigger through the chest and shoulders, you probably won't try and do that anyway. But what a lot of the, the, say the bigger players will do is in an attempt to swing the club back, they start adding a lot of motions through here. So the right elbow might lift, it might close up. And again, that causes that loss of control. So if you're sort of a bigger player, and you can only swing the club to here, that's absolutely fine because you're still going to be able to generate your leverage from that point there. So you don't have to swing the club back a mile. So you've got to look at what your body's capabilities are so that you can create correct form and retain that correct form. So when I'm setting up, I don't swing the club back as far as, I'm, as I used to, so, but I can still get and enable myself to have little enough movement to retain good form and still generate a reasonable amount of power in the motion. 
So practice that movement, even isolating the movement. Can I fold my right elbow just 90 degrees? And then from there, don't change the form of the arm with the, in relation to the upper body. Turn back to the top of the swing. Can you still see your right elbow here? Should be able to, whether it's just your right arm or you've got the club in your hands as well. You should still be able to see that right elbow. When you get to the end of the swing, have a look at how much rotations through the arm. Is there only about 90 degrees of bend in the elbow? That's what we're after. So practicing those movements, if you find that makes the swing feel shorter, then it's probably a, a positive change that's gonna help you with your, a lot of your shot control.